going on everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how to diagnose and repair your uh, coil on plug style coil packs. Now coil on plug or COP means that each individual cylinder has a coil pack that sits on top of the spark plug. Um, a lot of four cylinder engines only have one coil pack and it sits on top of the engine and it feeds all four cylinders. Uh, this vehicle happens to have eight separate coil packs because it's an eight cylinder engine. This is my girlfriend's 06 F-150 XLT with the 5.4 liter Triton. So this is going to be our example today. Um, I will be focusing on the coil on plug style, not the all-in-one coil pack like the four cylinders would have. So let's get started. Uh, we've got our engine light is on. I don't know if you can tell. You can kind of tell if you listen. It's got a miss. Now, if you don't have a scanner, which it doesn't need to be a, uh, you know, a fancy snap-on like this, you can go to O'Reilly's, Napa, AutoZone, Pep Boys, whatever, and they'll usually let you rent a scanner to see what the code is. Um, if you do not have a scanner, I'll post a picture right here showing you a COP light tester. that uh, what you do is you basically grab the handle and you put the end the probe you set that on top of the coil pack and it will light up and if it lights up red uh, or inconsistently then you have an issue if it flashes consistently in green that means you're good um, I'll explain a little bit more on that later but because I do have a scanner I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it this way first now first thing we gotta do this is an OBD2 style plug so we gotta locate the plug a lot of Fords are more towards the center here this one happens to be right here it only plugs in one way come on focus Jesus all right so now we're gonna shut the vehicle off I'm going to turn the key to the on position, or run, but we're not going to start it. I'm going to turn the scanner on. Ford. Obviously, if you don't have a Ford, you won't be doing this. You'll be picking a different vehicle. Verify all the information is correct. All right, now we're gonna go to code scan. Now we're gonna go down to engine. Memory codes. And we have, this one's probably just a generic one. I'm not gonna be too worried about that one because that's not gonna cause a misfire. We've got this P0351 ignition coil A, primary, secondary, circuit, fault. Now, because Ford wants to be difficult, A means cylinder one. So instead of using cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Ford uses cylinder A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So A means one. All right, now on the Fords, cylinder one, is the passenger one all the way towards the front of the truck. So I already know this one is bad. I've gone ahead, I've already swapped out coils, which I'm gonna show you how to do next. So we verified which one is the problem. Now, sometimes you'll get a multiple cylinder misfire code and hopefully at that point it logs multiple codes, okay? So now with this one, if you're not sure what that means, you could go on Google and type in your year, make and model and then the P0351 or whatever code yours is. And it'll give you a description and possible causes on how to fix it. So let's pop the hood. Take a peek at this jalopy. Okay, now the first thing you wanna do is, like I said, identify which cylinder it is. So if you have to, you can Google the uh, cylinder layout or the firing order of your particular vehicle like i said this particular engine um, cylinder one is the passenger side front 
So I'm coming over here. Here's the number one coil, it's kind of hidden. You can see that it is plugged in. Here's the electrical connector right here. It is plugged in, so that's what you want to make sure. Um, you can unplug them and then plug it back in. Make sure you can feel it click or engage that you got good connection. It's also not a bad idea to check the pins and make sure that they're not burnt or melted or you know spread out too far, not making good contact. Now, like I was saying with that COP or coil unplug tester, you just you would help. I'll put a link in the description if you want to buy this, by the way. Um, you just hold it and you put the end, the little probe, over the top of the coil pack here. And it'll just kind of blink, letting you know if it's firing or not. Now, that's not the best method because that just tells you that either your coil pack or your spark plug are bad. It won't tell you which one it is. Now, I recently just did all eight spark plugs on this thing, so... I'm pretty confident that this is not the issue. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty positive it's going to be an actual coil that's bad. So if you've verified that it's plugged in, everything looks good, what you can do is you can actually swap with another cylinder. So you can unbolt, in this case, on this exact engine, this little 7 millimeter bolt right here holds the coil pack in. So what I did to diagnose this is I unbolted this coil pack and I switched it with that one. And now if this coil is bad, then your code should move to this cylinder. You'll no longer have a cylinder one misfire or whatever cylinder you had. In my case, it was a cylinder one. Well, when I moved it to this one, it switched from a cylinder one misfire to this cylinder which means it's not the spark plug, it is the coil. Now sometimes these misfire codes can be tricky because the, you'll notice the engine will start running rough and having a lack in performance, but it might not trip an engine light right away. This is because sometimes it's required to have X amount of misfires before the engine throws a code. So what I'm gonna go to is my functionality test since I do have the scanner here. For my cylinder contribution test, Now a negative number means the cylinder is not helping. So if you go at the bottom here, we start at cylinder eight. This is a negative number, but it's not very negative. So we might have a little something going on with number eight. I'm not too concerned with that right now. The big one is here at number one, negative 33. So it's not that, that cylinder is not firing. It's not doing anything. So as you can see, the only downfall to the uh, method of switching coils with another cylinder is after you switch the coils, you may have to drive the vehicle for a day, you know, or X amount of miles before it throws an engine light again so that you can check and see um, if, in fact, the misfire moved with the coil or if it stayed with the original cylinder. Um, I will put a link in the description for my other video showing I know on a lot of Chrysler vehicles you can cycle the key on and off three times and it will show in the odometer area what your code is so you don't need a scanner it'll just cycle through all the codes so we'll put that in the description um, that does not work on this particular Ford vehicle so now that we know number one is for sure not firing we are now going to go ahead and replace it all right, here's the new coil with the OEM Motorcraft part number. If you have this exact engine and you um, wish to purchase this, I'll put a link in the description. All right, so I actually did a little bit of digging beforehand and I ordered two coils and I'll show you why in a little bit here. But we're gonna start first by removing that seven millimeter bolt down there. Again, if you have a different vehicle, it might be a different size, but the steps should be pretty similar. So we're gonna grab a seven mil right now. All right, so we're gonna unplug the coil. Get our ratchet down on there. You wanna be kind of careful with these because they're not exactly the beefiest bolts in the world. 
sometimes it helps to have a little pocket magnet to get them all out of there too. I unfortunately forgot mine, so I'm just going to have to grab it. And as you can see, when I did the spark plugs, I took the liberty of putting some anti-seize on here so that they don't uh, become seized in there and snap off because it's kind of a notorious problem on these trucks. All right, now some coil packs are just like spark plug boots where you they snap into place. You push down and they snap into place. Um, these particular Ford ones do not snap into place. They just rest on top of the coil, or sorry, on top of the spark plug. So we're going to fish that out. There we go. There's a little spring in there that contacts with the top of the spark plug. And I'm also going to remove this other one back here and I'll show you why in a second. Now I believe by Ford standards this is still under uh, three because they go one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. Um, I'll show you why I'm removing this one and replacing it as well. So when I did the spark plugs, I just happened to notice that there's a little crack right there, right? Push on it. It moves quite a bit. And you know, that's where your pins go through. Your wiring runs right there. And I don't like that. So to prevent further issues, we're going to be replacing the number three and the number one today. Now I'm going to keep this one for a spare coil, maybe keep it, you know, in the truck or something in case we're stranded somewhere with the truck running like crap, I don't know, but um, I don't like that. So we're gonna go ahead and install our two new coil packs. Now I'm not sure if this is an update, but one thing to note is you can see the spring actually hangs out more on the new coil. So maybe they had issues and this is an update. Another thing you wanna do before you put your new parts in is you wanna match them up and make sure that they look relatively similar. Um, like, obviously, there's this minor change, but everything else is the same. So I'm gonna guess that this is, you know, an update, uh, especially being that I ordered these parts from a Ford dealer off of the VIN. So I'm gonna guess that these are, in fact, the right coils. I'm not sure if they have the same number. Yep, same, same top number. So we're good. Go ahead and put them in now. You want to make sure you're putting these in the right way as well. As you can see, oh, I'm fingers in the way. Right here, there's the threaded hole for uh, the bolt that holds the coil down, and then next to it is the hole that the coil actually goes into. So that means we have to install it this direction, not this direction. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to bolt it down. that one into place again on this exact engine it doesn't there's no clicking some other engines you know you'll have to kind of determine when you pull it apart if you if you feel it click and thunk when you pull it apart you should probably feel a click when you're going back together these ones no click I'm going to start the mounting bolt down by hand because they are sort of wimpy bolts and I don't want them to cross thread or snap or anything like that so I'm just going to start it with the socket by hand and then we'll migrate to the ratchet. Now I'm using a quarter inch ratchet that's plenty of power you don't want to snap these just to give you a size comparison there's my finger they're pretty small so it won't take much we're just going to give them you know, it's still not quite bottomed out yet. Like right there, I can feel it bottom out. So we're just going to give it a little snug, and that's it. Now we're going to move to the next one. Same thing as the other one. Snake it down into the bore. You may have to move some stuff out of the way. But this one, I think I can sneak it in there. There we go. Line up the uh, mounting bolt there. And get our bolt started. All right, they're both in, they're tight. Now don't forget to plug them in. Do not forget to plug them in. But also remember, 
not to be too aggressive when we plug them in because I'm gonna listen for the click here it's really quiet on this one it's not a very solid click but I felt it you might not be able to hear it but we don't want to push too hard on it when we're plugging them in because we don't want it to crack like that other coil did all right both plugged in now we're gonna go fire it up see how it runs Now I can tell you in person already by feeling it, it runs much better. However, we do still have an engine light. That's because most cars won't clear the light on their own. Um, some of them will after a certain amount of drive cycles or key cycles, um, but most of them you will have to reset with the scanner. So now we're gonna fire this thing back up. Oops. Clear codes. And they want the engine off, I believe. Engine off, key on. All right, now I'm gonna start it again. No engine light. So that's that. Um, you know, you will, like I said, you will need a scanner to clear it out but if you don't own one you can go to an auto store and they will rent you one so you can go out to the parking lot clear it out so basically you can do all this without any tools you just rent the scanner at the auto parts store see which code you're getting for which cylinder if you have to do a little swap -a with the coil packs to you know verify whether it's the spark plug or the coil pack uh, replace the faulty component go back rent the scanner again clear it out and you're fixed. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more content like this. Have a good one.